Hello Aries and welcome to your monthly horoscope for November for the Sun or the Ascendant. Now I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of the key strands of this month before going on to give you a much more detailed analysis of the prospects ahead. And the thing I would say that characterises this month is intensity. Uranus is the planet of freedom but it's also the planet of rebelliousness restlessness and at times it can also see us a bit erratic and for the last few years it's been in your sector of everyday resources but this is also the area that's about our foundations in life and also how we feel in terms of our self-worth now maybe because of covid but i think all of those areas have been quite turbulent for us all over these last few years but particularly for you and what's happening this month is because there's such a lot of energy in the sign of Scorpio, which is opposite Uranus, or at least the Sun is in week one, Mercury is from the 12th to the 15th, and Mars is in week three, that's creating a very intense polarity, a push-pull. Now the energy of Scorpio for you is very much about longer term resources. It's about where you're most invested in personal relationships, potentially a close partnership, your business interests, entrepreneurship, anything to do with marshalling things like insurance policies, mortgages, investments and pensions. So those more longer term uh, strands. But they're coming into a direct opposition with the electric restless energies of Uranus. And therefore, that can make us all uh, rather more uh, inclined to react to situations, be a bit more impulsive. Now, your sign is very much about seizing the moment. If you sense opportunities, you go for it, whereas others may miss the chance because they're navel-gazing, worrying about this, that and the other. You have that confidence to be much more direct. And that could work incredibly well for you this month. But it's also equally important that you are not reckless around the use of your resources or around very close involvements, particularly of a sexual kind. Because if you're single, more than one person could really capture your imagination this month and make your pulse race. But before I go on to give you a much more detailed analysis, I'd just like to say thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to me or my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. If you'd like to get your free written horoscope fired to your device each morning, you can subscribe in the link beneath this video. I've been writing these for over 25 years. My work's used by some major platforms around the world and Britain's most read daily newspaper, The Metro. Also, with year 2022 racing up, if you'd like to seize the opportunity to discover what the prospects are for you based on your personal astrology, if you order your forecast now, I'll give you the rest of this year free, plus a character analysis, plus 30% off. And all of this is based on your time, date and place of birth, so it helps you ascend above this zodiac broadcast. So as you begin this month, Aries, the Sun is, as I've said before, in Scorpio. And you also have Mars, your ruler, that's just inched into Scorpio at the very end of October. This combination can give you a lot of desire and drive. Now the eighth house can give us the desire to get up close and personal. But also, if we're in a situation where the up close and personal relationship we've been involved in is not working so well. The eighth house can be a time of transitions, a time of endings followed by beginnings. And of course that process can be quite painful, but even if we go through those kind of transitions, which we've all experienced in our lives at some point, we know that when we emerge from the situation, we are given a glorious opportunity to rebuild our futures in a way which is more in keeping with the person we've become, particularly around longer relationships, than perhaps we were when we first entered that time. So as you come into this new month, a lot of 
uh, desire to either improve your financial circumstances or to feel a very deep connection may manifest itself for you. But on the very first day, the Sun is in a square with Saturn, the planet of restriction. And although Saturn is now going forwards, it came to the end of its retrograde last month on the 11th, and therefore your sector of friendship, where it's located, is a bit freer now. This suggests if you're thinking of going into business with a friend, I wouldn't say don't do it, but I would say think very carefully about the roles and terms of reference of those roles each of you are going to have. Now, on the 4th, we do have a new moon. And this new moon in Scorpio gives you the opportunity to springboard forwards with great determination and verve in the following month. But it is in opposition to that erratic energies of Uranus. So what you want from your close involvement could, in some ways, in the following four weeks, seem a bit conflicted. There may be part of you that wants to be close and very committed, but another part of you that wants to be free. And that's very difficult for you to understand, let alone anyone else you might be involved with. So if you're already in a relationship which is a bit off and on, a bit hot and cold, this month can turn up the temperature even more. But if you are single, it could lead to some uh, really spontaneous connections, which can be very, very exciting. And if you are someone who loves a little bit of drama, then this month is right up your chandelier. You really can uh, enjoy uh, the kind of spontaneity that it can create. But on the 5th, Mercury joins up with the Sun and also with Mars. But Mercury moving into Scorpio, moving from the sign of Libra, where it's been very much to do with communication, although that's been blighted, of course, by that retrograde, well, Mercury actually emerges from shadow on the 3rd of this month. But by the 5th, its move into Scorpio will help you to understand not necessarily what people have been saying, but what they really mean. So your ability to deep dive, get beneath the surface, understand the deeper machinations that have been going on, the politics of any situation, is certainly enhanced by Mercury entering that area. But also on the 5th, Venus, the planet of love and affection, but crucially also of money, enters the sign of Capricorn. Now for you, that's the 10th house, so that's your sector of goals and success. And Venus is going to be here for a really extended period through to the 6th of March next year. That's because it goes into a retrograde on the 19th of December. And pretty well for the whole of December, which I'll tell you in more detail about next time, it is alongside the deep and intense energies of Pluto. So your connections and relationships to people in positions of influence are really going to be highlighted uh, from now on too, through to the early part of March. But then on the 18th, Venus does go into shadow, preparing us for when it moves into that retrograde on the 19th of December. So even if relationships are cordial at work and it feels like you're building alliances and people understand where you're coming from, just remember the electricity that's being transmitted from Uranus, first to the Sun in week one, and then to Mercury from the 12th to the 15th, and then, crucially, in week three, between Uranus and Mars, can mean that, yes, there can be sudden ideas, sudden proposals, but also sudden demands to uh, find the money or the resources to back up certain strands that you're pursuing. So, if you're somebody who does like to have everything meticulously planned and work through things in a very systematic basis, this month could actually be quite challenging because it may ask you to make some snap decisions, listen to the instincts you have, which are generally very strong, but if you are someone who's a little bit not so typical Aries, if you're less of a, an instant risk taker, this month can be more challenging. But that brings us to the 19th and the full moon, which occurs in Taurus. So there again, we get that polarity between the second house of your situation and the eighth. And I have to tell you, there's going to be a lot of this next year because 
There's two eclipses in Taurus and two in Scorpio in 2022. So this could be a little bit of an early taste of how you're going to need to balance the ins and outgoings of your situation and also the more erratic side of your own desires, uh, your own attractions, your own uh, inclinations to uh, go for situations in a much less planned way because that's what all this electricity is creating. But it is true that in week two, the Sun actually in Scorpio forges a very enabling link with Pluto. And because Pluto is the modern region, the modern ruler, sorry, the co-regent and the modern ruler of uh, Scorpio, it is such a Scorpionic month, I can't tell you. So that's very, very good for business if you're trying to build up those alliances. But unfortunately, also in week two, Mars goes into a square with Saturn. And I wouldn't be tempted to take any shortcuts in terms of probity when it comes to business ventures or long-term finances or when it comes to group situations. Just be conscious that there could be some politics. So although Saturn is going forwards along with Jupiter in the part of your horoscope to do with friendships and groups, there is that pinch point in week two as well as conversely the opportunity. So don't try to seize the main chance by doing something that's unethical or goes against the rules of your state or country uh, because it could come back upon you. However, the uh, position of that full moon in Taurus does forge a very enabling angle with Pluto too, but it does square with the aforementioned Jupiter. So for you, uh, a tendency to be quite generous actually could manifest itself on the back of that full moon for two weeks and again I take you back to that earlier point that if you're thinking of doing something on a collective basis or with a friend it's vitally important that you're really clear about what your long-term objectives are and that you don't invest money without really thinking about what the consequences could be if the project that you're working on or the people that you're trying to link to if it doesn't work out quite as expected. And therefore, I wouldn't be betting any kind of energy, effort, affection or money on a situation this month unless you're really conscious of what you're getting into. Now, if you're someone who does like a little bit of the thrill of the chase or living by the seat of your pants when it comes to the investments, or doing things that are a little bit more in the moment than others, this could be a month right up your street. But by the 22nd, when the sun makes its way into the sign of Sagittarius, your sister fire sign, and then is joined on the 24th by Mercury, the latter part of this month is, is less intense. Things open up for you. There is an opportunity for you to be very constructive in your uh, arrangements with others, particularly from the 28th to the 30th when Mercury forges a very stabilizing link with Saturn. And you can really reach an accord and that may be the perfect time to convert some of the more daring ideas of earlier the, in the month into something that's more formulated, much more rehearsed, worked out. You thought about all the pitfalls, you got all your research done. The ninth house is brilliant for any kind of research. It's also very good for travel. So if COVID regulations allow, you may want to jet off somewhere towards the end of this month. Or if you're someone who's more spiritually inclined, it may be a time to check out or philosophically inclined to go somewhere, you know, where you can sort of get a rich feeling for history and culture and and go to the theatre, watch a band, those kind of things can all be very exciting towards the end of this month. So you can see that even for you, who can be someone who can make some quite bold moves, this could be a month that almost pushes you to, to be a bit more impulsive at times, even if, I, as I said before, you are one of those Aries people who tends to be a bit more cautious. If that's the case, you've probably got some Taurus planets close to your sun, possibly Mercury and Venus. If you are someone who really, really likes to go for it, then and you're prepared for the, the knockbacks that can happen if you, you know, ask someone out on a date, just straight out, would you like to go out on a date? 
and then it could get seriously steamy quite quickly. If that's the type of stuff that really floats your boat, this can be a great month. But if you're someone who really likes a degree of stability in your life, but is yearning for some greater action and danger almost, then this month could see you rather conflicted, I feel. It's been a real pleasure being with you, Aries. Please stay safe, take care, and goodbye.